As I sat down to write my review for Watch Dogs Legion, I tried to draw from my past experiences with this franchise and genuinely channel my thoughts and feelings towards this latest release into a compressed 20 minute review. A task I have found quite daunting. You see, at first I conceptualized a script that compared the previous two Watchdog titles with Legion, but it digressed into a 30 minute compare and contrast essay that was a total mess, and I ended up scrapping it. Next up was a comedic montage of sorts where I cut and spliced all my greatest hits and failures during my 20 plus hours with this game into a gag reel. But once again, that concept was quickly terminated. So instead, I decided to stay true to myself and do what I do best. Speak honestly, factually, and most importantly, from the heart. This video and review is not sponsored by Ubisoft, but I would like to thank them, and more specifically, the North American PR team for sending me this early copy for review. So sit back and enjoy as I present my review of Watch Dogs Legion. Maybe you are new to the Watch Dogs franchise and know nothing about it, or maybe you are a returning veteran DedSec hacker. And for both of you, there are going to be new mechanics and storylines to encounter in Legion. Oh, and before we get too far into this review, I wanted to quickly state that this review is 100% spoiler free. So if you are here to see end game footage or specific solutions to the hacking puzzles, this is not the video for you. All right, let's get into Legion. So let me first cover one of the most important factors when jumping into an open world game, and that is the environment. You see, if you're gonna be spending a huge amount of your time in that setting, it has to not only be functional, but immersive and beautiful. And the recreation of London in Watch Dogs Legion is in my opinion, superbly done. I mean, it's all here, that strong mix of modern, art deco, and gothic architecture, those recognizable landmarks like Big Ben, Tower Bridge, and the London Eye you know, that huge Ferris wheel. Even the tight side streets through the little nooks and crannies of the compressed communities are there in the game. Now, FYI, I played the game on my PC on ultra graphic settings, although I did turn down the shadow setting to medium to not overtax my 1080 Ti graphics cards. I really need to invest in a 3000 series card for future reviews, but my point being is that the game looked quite good in the open world. And to be honest, I went into this review expecting the open world to shine, as Ubisoft is known for this element of being master world crafters. But for me, despite all the beauty and faithful geographic accuracy you find in Legion's London, it felt lacking in some area that took me a bit of reflection to finally pinpoint density. London is a city of nearly 9 million residents, and I was fully expecting to see packed sidewalks, pubs, and city streets with the normal congestion that you would find in a modern metropolis. But it is simply not there. The cityscape is all there, the size and the scope of the design exist, but what is missing is the vibrant noise and packed density that you expect to encounter. Now for comparison, let me show you a clip from Assassin's Creed Unity. Now, I know this is a completely different genre of game, but I wanted to show it in this comparison so that I can establish the fact that Ubisoft Studios have the capabilities to do these type of density situations correctly. And for comparison, here is Watch Dogs Legion and I purposely picked what should be a heavily packed area right next to Parliament, and it is during the morning, so the commuter traffic should be intense at this point. You see what I mean? It's not only the lack of population density, but the lack of a vibrant soundscape. It just feels thin and muted in London versus the Unity clip in Paris. I know it's not the end of the world, but it is in items like this and such a beautiful recreation of a modern cityscape that creates a sense of contextual fracture. What we know to be true, high population, high density, tremendous amounts of sound versus what we get, scant bodies, low density, and a thinned out soundscape detracts from the believability of our surroundings. How can an open world that has so many visible positives, like reflections, ground clutter, shadow, scope, and size, be underpopulated and audibly muted? Now, like I said, not the end of the world, but it was something that really stuck out to me, so I felt I needed to mention it. Yeah. 
In video games, movement equals power, and developers have to work to find a balance to that power level. Give the player too much movement flexibility and speed, and they can just simply rip through content faster than expected. Give them too little movement expression, and they simply won't want to play the game, citing the fact that the lack of movement makes the game boring and too restrictive. Now, in my opinion, Watch Dogs Legion really nails this facet of the game, not so much in the natural character movement, but in the flexibility of the combination of physical movement in tandem with what I call hack jumps. So first up, let me discuss the natural character movement of Legion. And it is a locked third-person perspective, and you will therefore encounter the natural oddities that are associated with this point of view. Movement is manageable, and I did notice a bit of lag between my rotation and the over-the-shoulder camera, although it's not game-breaking, and once you get used to it, you can take it into account. Now, in terms of overall movement abilities, don't go into Legion thinking that you are the second coming of Ezio Auditore, as natural movements are more centered in real-world physics, but you are capable of climbing and vaulting objects, but they require them to be of scalable heights or through the use of ladders. Driving requires a bit of time to acclimate to, as each of the vehicle types have separate and distinct handling characteristics. Standard sedans handle differently than sports cars or vans, and I appreciate this subtle difference. High-performance vehicles should handle differently than a work truck, and Legion brings that mechanic to life. I also found sport bikes and cruisers even more of a challenge to handle, as the body lean and high-speed capabilities produce some memorable face plants. Once again, expect a bit of a dead zone in the controls, much like with your natural character movements, as the vehicle inputs along with the third-person camera seem to lag ever so slightly behind. Fans of verticality will rejoice in the fact that you can hack and pilot your very own cargo drones that you can ride atop of, giving you the ability to explore London by air or to gain yet another pathway to enter a mission or restricted zone. Where Legion truly excels in movement speed and flexibility is in the hacking, and this single facet alone sets this franchise apart in the gaming world. Whereas natural character movements and vehicle handling are more grounded in real-world physics, hacking makes us superhuman, and it is the hacking, along with the beauty of the open world, that are this game's two strongest attributes. Hacking allows your character unlimited routes to tackle the mission and the objectives, and it really becomes a puzzle within the puzzle. Your character can hack terminals, camera feeds, cell devices, and security panels, along with all manner of autonomous objects like cars, drones, and bots. Once you learn to embrace this flexibility, it gives you so many more avenues to finish missions, and it really breaks from the typical mold of minigames that limit your routes and require you to complete objectives in a singular manner. I found myself using my bots and hacking defense drones just as much as I use my weaponry in melee combat, and it is important for you to become comfortable with this gameplay mechanic, as in in-game content, you will be combining weaponry, melee combat, and hacking into a singular murderous ballet. If you've never played a Watch Dogs game and are looking for a refreshing core combat mechanic, hacking in combination with standard offensive techniques makes you feel like a badass. Combat is a central mechanic to Legion, and it exists on a multitude of planes, so let me next give you a bit of a rundown and a few recommendations for you concerning this topic. Legion doesn't place too much emphasis on any one combat technique and instead allows you to decide what's best from hacking, melee, or standard weaponry. There will be times during most missions that hacking your way through is the best response to your present situation, and this could vary from using a disrupt on an enemy target's personal device to give you a few moments to sneak behind them and perform a stealthy takedown, all the way to hacking an enemy gun emplacement and raining down automatic fire on your unsuspecting targets. Now, if you were looking to go full hack mode and get the most out of this combat style, I would look for an agent with some natural hacking talents linked to that character, like the fast hacking perk that brings your hack abilities back from cooldowns faster. Also, the character shock hack perk that adds a brief shock period to an enemy when you apply a disrupt to them, or the key steal perk that gives you unlimited range when downloading a key code are ideal for this type of playstyle. Also, try investing in the AR Shroud perk in your tech tree that will visually shroud any target that you perform a takedown on. Because, you know, sometimes it's better to not leave bodies laying all over the place, for obvious reasons. 
If the mood strikes you and you just want to go full Bruce Lee and get your melee Muay Thai vibe going, this is definitely something you can do in Legion. Although it is more time consuming and generally less efficient than the hack stealth combos or just using your standard weaponry. Look to recruit agents that feature a melee weapon, such as a baton or wrench, to enhance their overall melee damage. Other useful agent perks include Physically Fit that reduces incoming damage, which you will take more of and be exposed to during melee combat, especially if another target spots you in the middle of your bare fist brawl. Recommended tech tree upgrades include Mesh Skin that reduces incoming damage for all DedSec agents and stays active as a passive perk along with an interesting melee device called the Electro Fist. This gadget will replace any other gadget you have equipped like a spider bot, but it does pack quite a punch and can incapacitate targets quickly. Aiming weaponry in general is workable but not snappy, so don't expect FPS twitch shooter movements in this game. Takedowns are easy to perform if directly behind your target, and hacking bots or autonomous devices for extra firepower can be a game changer. One recommendation I would give is to access your options menu and toggle the melee mode to hold, allowing you to hold down the melee button to perform sequential strikes instead of continually clicking away. Now in general, hacking and standard weaponry are the most effective and efficient means to down targets. Melee can be interesting, but it requires longer to complete and exposes you to be noticed and therefore alerting other enemies to your position. Enemies can either guard themselves, allowing you to perform a guard break, or they will attack, at which time their animations will slow down and you will get an audible warning, allowing you plenty of time to perform a dodge and begin your attacks again. Heavily armed targets will engage in melee combat, but if given enough time, will switch to their standard automatic weaponry to attempt to finish you off. Alright, you've probably noticed that I have so far steered clear of the narrative portion of the game, and I'm sure you want me to go ahead and give you my thoughts on the missions, the narrative, the characters, like what literally makes up the basis for the game, and this is where I'm going to lay it all out for you. So in terms of the plot and the storyline, it was interesting enough to keep me playing through the 20 or so hours I put in to finish it up, although I do want to elaborate on the flow and progression system the game uses. Now I still have some side missions and of course all of the normal collectibles you expect to find in an open world game, like those hackable tablets that give you in-game currency known as ETO, tech points which you use to upgrade your tech skills, and other audio log items. Jumping back into the flow and progression of the game, and this was truly a mixed bag for me. You see, the intro comes out of the gates like a cannon shot with this whole James Bond secret agent vibe, and for me, this was the pinnacle defining moment for the entire narrative line. I mean, it had action, skills, narration, and a huge plot development all within the first 10 to 15 minutes of the game. And if it had continued with this style of missions and pacing, the game would have been electric. Instead, the gameplay became stale and repetitive with a long series of hack and recruitment missions that even when completed failed to add any weight or build conviction in what we had just accomplished. The accomplishments for finishing many of these mid-game missions are some credits, some tech points, and a series of audio calls from various sources, and then another mission assignment. When you did encounter other NPCs to converse with, say for instance at the DedSec safe house, or even when you were attempting to recruit them, the facial animations and lip syncs were so subpar and totally immersion breaking. Just look at this conversation and notice just how far off the audio is with the syncing of the lips and the total lack of any real facial movements. You should be blowing the whistle on the army's secret deaf robot program. What? Seriously. How the military is replacing its soldiers with hyper-realistic robots. These robots are everywhere. They're recording everything we do all the time. Um... Throughout the game, characters are forgettable at best. And I think this is really where this play-as-anyone design philosophy came back to haunt the studio. As yes, we do have that ability to pick any agent we want, which on paper sounds like a truly liberating experience. But with that, we also never become truly invested in any one of our characters. I can't tell you the name of any of the agents I use during the missions. I mean, I remember their accents and overall demeanor during their narrative deliveries, but that's really about it. The main villain is the main villain from pretty much the first moments of the game, and although there is a rather large plot twist towards the end of the game, 
you will probably know what is coming based on everything you encounter up to that point. I think the game design could have really benefited from a series of character development missions for each agent we recruit to DedSec to help build some interest and attachment to the agents we choose to bring to the cause. The real bright spot in terms of character development is actually Bagley, the witty AI system that appears digitally in your optics. His narrative deliveries are comical and really stand out to the normal bland narrative that you encounter during your gameplay. Progressing even further into the game and you start to see the heavy reuse of assets like narrative lines. Here is Bagley chiming in after you've completed a series of missions and these clips are recorded when I had completed the missions with entirely different characters. Hell yes! You see all that? Fuck I'm good at being in DedSec! You wouldn't have been recruited if DedSec thought you'd be killed that easily. You trying to be nice, Bags? Aw, thanks mate. No, don't worry about Bagsy, you get used to his side commentary. My job, cuz. I am rather good at this dead sec business, aren't I? You wouldn't have been recruited if dead sec thought you'd be killed that easily. You sure know how to sweet talk a gentleman. No, don't worry about Bagsy. You get used to his side commentary. My job, cuz. Also, I encountered the exact same building design on several differing recruit missions, although the mission parameters and recruited characters were entirely different. Progressing into the end game content and it becomes this endless loop of infiltrate the mission area, hack an overly complex series of circuitry to gain access to the terminal, survive horde mode encounters while downloading the needed data to destroy the complex, escape the area triggering a cutscene, and then do it all over again. Now I may be oversimplifying it a bit, but you get the gist of what I'm saying. And what is a real shame here is that there are some seriously interesting topics that the game just kind of breezes over. There is the whole element of society being ruled over by the iron fist of the state-run private military organization Albion. There is the issue of how much access and integration should society have at its fingertips knowing that Big Brother could use it against them. There is also a whole storyline about digital integration of the human consciousness that the game started into and then abruptly concluded. Taking a deep dive into any one of these issues could have proven so much more intense and interesting than the methods the plot lines bring to the game. Before moving on to the final ratings, I wanted to quickly touch on the sensitive topic of microtransactions, and Watchdog Legion does indeed have them, but they seem to be strictly customizations and from my experience, the game doesn't unmercilessly push them to the forefront. My review copy came with a bundle that gave me access to three legacy operatives, basically special agents with special outfits and three abilities versus the standard two you find on many recruits. There was also a section for boosters, but it didn't seem to function like what you would think, as it allowed you to purchase a map overlay to show you the exact locations of the collectibles. There is also a season pass add-on that included the expansions, new missions, more playable heroes, and it looks like the return of Aiden Pierce from the original Watch Dogs game, although it didn't list how much the expansion was to purchase. After such an intensive breakdown of the game, including many criticisms, I don't want you to think that Watch Dog Legion is a terrible game. Quite the contrary. There is a lot going on here. The huge and rich open world, the hacking, the recruitment mechanics, the ability to play as anyone and build up your DedSec team. And I didn't even have time to touch on the mechanics of recruiting a lawyer to get your agents out of jail faster, or a paramedic to reduce their heal times should they take too much damage in a mission. There are also the specialty recruits like the special spy agent with the personalized car that fires rockets or the John Wick look-alike that really punishes enemies in close quarters combat. But some of Legion's strengths are also its greatest weaknesses. The open world that is beautiful, yet sparsely populated and lacks a convincing soundscape. The ability to play as anyone that quickly turns to an excuse to forget everyone. The overall lack of mission design after that initial 007 style intro mission. The fact that the game becomes repetitive and grindy. And the disjunct and what felt like rushed endgame sequences all held back what I felt could have been an excellent experience into this genre of open world game. So after all that I have expressed, weighing both the pros and cons, I'm going to give Watch Dogs Legion a 6 out of 10. Now, if the game had continued with that adrenaline junkie style of mission we saw at the beginning of the game, I would have been about an 8 of 10. 
This game concept has a unique take on the open world model, and the hacking mechanics are truly interesting. And it all leads to Legion feeling like a light version of Grand Theft Auto and a Rubik's Cube ended up having a baby. Now, I can appreciate the feeling that with this latest installment to the Watch Dogs franchise, the design team was really wanting to try something new, and they attempted to swing for the fences. But in this case, the game missed the mark in several key categories and took what could have been a truly great concept and returned with a slightly above average game. This is going to wrap up my full review of Watch Dogs Legion, and I encourage you to leave your feedback in the comments section below. What are your feelings towards this latest release from Ubisoft? If you like this review, leave a rating and share the video. Links to support my YouTube content creation include Patreon and Teespring, both in the video description. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter for all my latest thoughts on most things gaming related. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.